you will receive updates through the YouTube channel and on the mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list and you want to be updated on this uh, CD release, there is a link in the description box below where you can opt in for the mailing list. So that's the easiest way. And certainly for next year and after the release of the CDs, um, Arne is going to take on the mailing list a little bit more because we have to expand that and make it in a, in more into a more regular scheme. And again, we'll be happy when this release because last week's were really uh, a little bit too busy. So good that you're here to force me play. Actually, I played a lot. More of that in a second. So the new setup, I hope it works. Let me know what your experience is during this live session. I will be live streaming the coming days and weeks much more. On Sunday evenings, we will have the live streams as we have today and we have had since a few weeks that's the 10th edition now so we keep that so with writing fingerings and going more into detail having um, more conversations like if you would like and but I'm going to re-record the partitas the GS Bach partitas and I've, I'm talking on that since long and this project actually is just uh, ready to start I just have to move the tape recorder from the living room, living room to the kitchen um, uh, make sure that I don't hear it here in the living room. We don't have a studio yet and the tape recorder makes some noise so we have to get rid of that and then I want to start with the real recording so to say as I call them on um, tape for release on vinyl and CD and high resolution digital files next year in May. And in order to force myself to play a lot more on the partitas. I decided to do live streams, less complicated than this one. So just with one webcam and I will regularly turn on the live stream. So you might have notifications in your mailbox um, once a day, two, twice a day or not. Um, and I will not talk too much in those sessions, just play and share those practicing moments with you. So it will be different than this live session, but uh, more playing. Okay, that was it about the announcements. And Giovanni, I see in the chat, uh, Charles, great, Paul, Thomas, great to have you all here. Let's start with this session today. Last week we had half a look on the fingerings of number nine, which I finished, and that we on that piece we're going to have a look together after we I started with the 10th Symphonia, so this is a new one. New one. Uh, the 9th is a really complicated piece. And um, then we didn't have a look to the number 8. So we have that as well. And then after that, I'm just going to play randomly because it's time to have the Symphonias in my fingers, so to say. Um, in between, I try to read the chat. And if I miss something, Anya will notify me and certainly afterwards he's copying the what you write in the chat and if I miss something she present it with me to me and I come back to the next to it next week okay there we go so I have to do one thing and that is reduce the size of this webcam so I'll make myself uh, oh not that one this one so there I go I like doing that actually and okay so we are here in the 10th Symphonia okay there we go it's a new piece for me for you for those of you who are new to the uh, these live streams so the Symphonias I've never played them I know them a little bit never listened to them much so it's rather new music where might be surprising to some of you but it is like it is i've skipped the symphonias and the inventions while being in conservatory only started to play the piano there and then i was to play the voltaire pretty clavier that's standard repertoire in conservatories for pianists and so here are the symphonias so let's do two lines and then go to the f minor symphonia there we go i just play a few uh, bars and see what we can what we come to do
Okay, so it's a really strange way of writing, I think. But anyway, this is rather strange. So um, this is way less complicated than the the previous, uh, the ninth, and also the eighth one. So we have lines, and w one thing you have to do, to, I think, is just make good scaling finger fingerings. There are a few tricky things, we come to that. So I think a third finger is great to start, strong finger. So, and if I look for a good fingering when something is not too complicated, you still have a lot of options. And my 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 impression, my my experience is that even when you think about that and make the decision on the fingering, it helps you. So I sh shift my hands here from this position just to that position. And then I play all five fingers, come on the A. And I have two options then. Go over with my fourth finger, which Bach sometimes does. You know, he used the temp um, as a f independent finger. He didn't start with that, but it's, he of course expanded the possibility with fingerings. But I don't like to go over with my fourth finger over the first, certainly not when the thumb, when the first finger falls on a strong beat. It's a relatively strong beat because it's a second beat, but of course it's the first note of those pair of four. So it has an accent, but unlike pianists, and I had to do it in school in conservatory as well, learn to play scales going over your first finger with the three or the four and not making accents on the, on the next note. It feels unnatural. So, there I am sitting here just a few seconds ago told you that it was very easy and still here we are in the second bar making decisions. I, I don't like the idea of having first finger in a downward scale where I have to make a transition to a hand, a repositioning of my hand. Because, it, of course, it has a natural accent. And I can, I can, I can cover it. I mean, this is, it's very good. It's, it's easy to play. But I have to think, while crossing my thumb with my third finger that I don't make an accent. I, I shouldn't make an accent on the G. And if I would just do something silly and just transpose my, um, uh, transfer my hand position, that would be te technically more demanding because I have to jump. On the second finger, I would choose my fourth thing. And I'm sorry that we go into detail here so much, but uh, it's interesting because listen what happens. You get a natural accent. It's different with the other finger. And, and I, I don't try to force, to, to, to force something. I mean, I just let the fingers play. So with it, I try the, what we have written now. Then I would go to three, one. Let's see what I would do then. I think I would end on second finger. I have just an articulation there. Four. Another solution would be to have to start with four and I just write it on top. And again, that is, that's, that's more difficult because I, and don't turn your hand then. I just shift my hand from position. I change position. Or the first fingering is more equal. The second one is more pronounced. So 
that's that's the choice we have to make now right at the beginning it's not a big deal but it's good to share this with you because if you're not familiar with these types of fingering so that i mean it's not it's not yeah it's 18th century kind of fingering it you will not find it in the sources we've talked about that a lot because all the passages all the symphonias contain so much passages that you will not find in sources there are exceptions on exceptions on exceptions but um it's good to stand still one of the one of the definitions of one of the point of departures to me at least is to try to avoid finger substitutions on the same note and try to hold on the hand position as long as possible so departing from those two standpoints you have two options here let's try with the left hand I leave it open. I don't know what's best. I leave it open. We see later what we decide to, to take. This is, my, this is a saver. Okay. Here we have an exercise in releasing the notes. I have to make sure that you can read it like this. Five, two, five, one. So release of the same finger. And don't try to hide it because you can't. The only thing you can do is just make sure that the releases are very, very relaxed. And of course Bach wants you to train that. And then here's a jump to make inevitable in the left hand. So we come with a B. Also here, just this easy note, so to say. I go from first finger, I don't try to do something um, to reach the next note more easy because left hand will have to take over so parts of the middle voice. And I'm sorry for the tuning a little bit. It has to do with the freezing of the, it's freezing outside, but also I have to tell you with my little daughter, uh, my youngest, Evelyn, she's five and she's she's asking me to learn her the notes as she says and it's no better way with saint nicolas uh, who's coming on 6th december here in belgium to learn to play and she plays that with such enthusiasm that i have to retune all the notes that she's learning so uh, i'm sorry for that i hear some octaves are out of tune but anyway it's so nice to do that but sometimes he finds the piano more easy than the clavichord and while sitting on the piano he finds the clavichord more easy so I should film it once, it's really really fun. Okay, so we make the jump here from, not a jump, we just go uh, transfer our hand to a new position and what happens then is that this note gets an accent automatically. Also here I try not to open my hand too much, it gets a natural articulation and here I have to go I have to repeat the ace so with the octave it's no problem okay I have to be careful with the transition to hold this note so I go with it. I think three okay let's see what happens then so the fifth finger is still here so it's like this 
first finger, second finger, first finger. Very smooth release there. And I do practice that just by taking more time than necessary. Release a note. And at the end, while playing it more, it will go more smoothly and more fast, faster because the, the movement is there. No tension, no tension. It's difficult. Because the middle, middle um, voice should run smoothly. Second finger and then passages like this. Of course, must be tried with the two hands together if, if it feels right. And also here, you have this line, this soprano voice goes to, goes to the A and this voice goes to the C. I try to keep that in my left hand here. So I... So one, two, four finger and then go to the C here. So the other way around. And then here I shift. I would five up one. Okay, three, one. Okay. Then. And then I go to my fourth finger. So it's it's, it's a quite an exercise to uh, from left and right hand to help each other's position. Uh, So the difficulties of this piece is really in that, that you have to interrupt the lines of uh, one hand to um, assist in the middle section. And that goes from top to bottom and you know what I mean, left hand, right hand. So, okay, I'll continue with that fingering and, and we continue with that next week to uh, have a close reading together. Let's see if I've missed something in the chat. Yeah, I should learn Evelyn to tune. That would be great, actually. Imagine that she would like doing that. Um, anyway, <laughs> no, it's great, really. Um, Sophie, I've never, I've just switched. Uh, to the other view. Sophie is 11 and she didn't play it too much. It's sometimes not easy. Okay, I switch to the other view like this. And there we have the F minor Sinfonia, which is an amazing piece. And I finished the finger fingering until the end. And so let's go through it together, see what we make out of it. So last week we talked about the movement of the arm of the wrist to make to make lines like this and really that's that's you should try that to practice you can actually hear it that it's very cantable and i didn't do anything just follow the movement of my wrist Okay, there we go. Very slowly, it's an adagio tempo, obviously, harmonically speaking, certainly. So much change of harmonies, so dense harmony. Um, but now to the fingering. Okay, there we go. Obviously, at the beginning. Also here, I'm diving into interpretation already. Well, it's actually technically. So the G, the release of that, certainly, and Bach writes a bow, it should be shorter than the left hand. And 
you can hear the F how it goes. If I don't do that, So this tempo guidance spot, like Leopold Mozart would say, is here. It should be meaningful. Certainly the repetition. This is really difficult. Taking over here in the left hand. So the left hand, really awkward fingering. Three, four, five on the C. And also here, good independent releases. Here in the left hand, second finger on C, I have to jump to the fifth finger here, but it's not a real problem. So I try to keep it as sober and natural as possible. Keep the C because the A flat is going under the C. I try to play it slow that you can follow. Also, this is it's not very natural, not very um, common, I was I should say. So four, two, one, two, three on A flat. And then starts in the middle voice. So it's really difficult to keep this independent. Left hand is having this chromatic downscale. Difficult trill on A flat G. So between the upper note. So you open the hand a little bit with the help of the wrist because you, you can't reach there the wrist has to help to adjust the positioning of the fingers it's, it's very small but it's necessary releases bass Upper voice. Middle voice. So that's a really good exercise. Releasing on the C going down on the on the G. I take this with the first finger on the D flat because I want to have this tension line. Second finger would, just according to the book, you should play this D flat with the second finger. Emmanuel Bach writes almost never use the first finger on the 
on the half note, but here it's, you cannot apply that fingering, what he's describing in his book, on the symphonia sort of com more complicated, it's a basis. A good basis, by the way. Here, third, three, one, and the right, right hand, then second finger, Fourth finger here, it's really complicated. Here, right hand, C flat, and then the middle voice, four, three. I have to release, very careful, because I don't want to interrupt this chromatic line, but I have to release, because I go further, play this with five and two. So, you won't find much keyboard music in that period, that's so complicated regarding fingerings. We have seen much more music in the 19th century and, and, and later, but in that time, this, this kind of music must have been really for private use for Bach. I, I cannot imagine that you would play this in a concert at the court. I mean, it's way too complicated. They would have looked very astonished, I think. It's just an, I imagine that. I'm not an history, historian. I have not studied history, you know, but I just can imagine that. It's not the Brandenburgse Concerti. And even that is complicated. Okay. Again here, I have to repeat the A flat, no problem. And always a repeated note must have. So not too fast. Okay, right hand goes up, needs to have full attention to the G. Imagine having played that with a by trave traverse flute. Of course, it's great in clavichord that you have this G. You can make it really emotional. But in the middle section, you have the chromatic line. <laughs> but the, the bass part is saying, I can't help you, but. I have my own problems here with the A flat. So, this release of this note going to the F flat, having this chromatic line from the right hand that actually wants to skip or wants to end the F earlier because it needs to prepare for this melodic line in the soprano, it's really tricky. It has all to do with releases. The, 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 the better you control releases, the more expressive you can do passages like this. It's always also a suggestion, you know. A suggestion of longer notes, actually. Strange harmony. Just reading. Releases, middle section, middle voice, and the bass. Okay, I take over with the with the left hand, I think.
imagine we would only have this piece preserved by Jazz Bach. He still would be one of the greatest, if not the greatest composer. This is just insanely beautiful. So sad music, so deep emotionally and harmonically in that time. 17, around 20, forgot the, the date. That's Let's try just to play it now in this tempo. Um, it might be a little bit faster, perhaps. I don't know, but I keep this tempo because I want to, I want to um, have control over the notes. That's one thing. The fingerings is the second thing. But thirdly, I want to follow all the lines. I want don't want to miss any of them, and I will miss. But it's important to have all um, entrances clear, all motives, and again i cannot emphasize this enough the releases independent releases that's what makes polyphonic play giving this three-dimensionality and it's a difficulty
if you don't mind, I would try to do it again because I felt that some of the movements were quite okay. So I just tried to to transfer that to the beginning. And the, the difference is that the tension, as I explained, is in the so I so just by giving it a little bit more, but not too much. And again, it's just I'm just thinking out loud. I have the feeling that if I give it a little bit more, so technically making it a little bit longer than it's written, um, that it feeds this movement of sorrow. Relax. Okay, tension. Solution. The same. This is getting a little bit of shape now. And on the end, at the end, the clavichords, if you just 
Keep a little bit too much pressure and it starts to cry, so to say. So, so this is a this place where you can use that effect. So this section is really difficult because here happens so much that by losing, and I lost actually the tension in this motif, because it's really tricky. If you go over, over the top, if you, it's like, you know, it, it shouldn't break the tension. And if you go a little bit over the top, then it's really over. And it's impossible to restore that feeling within a few bars, so you, you will be, be lost. And then the music l loses of its, its magic. It, it returned here. Because it's, it's, should not surprise, because that's, here it is easier, since... You can you can do it more. You can exaggerate a little bit because the music will it will it will uh, since the releases are so obvious, you can do it a little bit more, and you should actually. But to keep the same feeling here, we are tricky, and of course from this movement to that, from this 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 to beginning, till the end, keep the same. Um, effect and keep the same way of performing that motive is really really hard and I must say having played it twice now it, I can feel it it's uh, okay it's, it's 20 past 10 already so you should warn me if I go too deep into to a piece like that I, I, I can no I cannot play this for hours because it's too uh, it's too fatiguing because to keep this movement ongoing and this will need several weeks to be able to play it in a more relaxed way with the same effect. Let's just finish this uh, live session with Symphonia number no. 8. I have promised that last, last week so we go through that very slowly and maybe I come to some passages that um, need our attention but, but just very slowly that you can follow the fingering if you can see it and to end with an F major uh, piece after this F minor it might be good for going to sleep later after that having nice dreams then an F major dreams what would that be actually so I'm playing very really slow now Written fingerings here for the trills. I don't know if I would add them. Also a passage where you have to jump in the right hand just to come and help the left hand. And just make the jump. Don't try to shift fingers. Out.
actually I haven't looked on this piece since I made the fingering two or three weeks ago and it's quite complicated. Such a piece I usually have to play a few days very slowly until I can memorize not the notes but uh, the view of the notes and then it starts uh, to get easier because it, at the end it's not such a complicated piece. The only thing you need to do is sometimes just jump like here and it's the same way as we did in the, uh, in the tent. I had indicated some passages I wanted to share with you, but I can't remember them now. Anyway, um, the Symphonias, as you know, will be the first and this, the inventions, the first project we will publish as a score with my fingerings. So they will be available. It will be in 2017 and actually Costas is going to help us with this project. It will be a great collaboration with uh, written out fingerings. I will link then from within the score to the uh, sections we do now. So I will have a new, um, uh, I will download all the video, the live streams and cut them in, in, in uh, different uh, ways so that you can go easily to the uh, different symphonias as we practice them together. Would be great. And I think Costas will write some um, analysis of the pieces. So, so that will be available next year, hopefully, hopefully. Oh, sure it will. So we will do that. So, okay, it's 24 past 10 and I can feel that I've been practicing almost for an hour together with you. So I just take my tablet and see if there's something in the chat that I should respond to. I hear Anya typing. So I think she's doing a great job. Okay, and she's doing a really great job because it's impossible for me to read all in at once. Oh, oh, I see that I can have Belgian beer after the live stream, so I have to close very <laughs> joking, but normally I do. Um, okay, so this was the 10th session of the live streams. Again, this week, and the coming weeks, really, I will be live streaming much more. Only practicing the Bach partitas. And you might be surprised sometimes that I really have to go over them again. That's typically music that you will lose when you didn't play it for some months. I do. For next week, I will be have finished the fingering of the 10th Symphonia. We go very slowly through it. The whole piece like we did now, the F minor will be a little less complicated, I hope, I think. Uh, then we start with the 11th and then still four more to go. And I would like to add some playing moments to this live stream, but there's a lot to be to talk about on fingering and on technique and on practicing. That might only be happening when we have finished the 15th so that we start actually a new um, episode in this live practicing hours the actually playing and real practicing of the work that we have done together okay having said that i wish you a very good night if you are in my time zone if you are somewhere to the west i think i wish you a nice day and if you're to the east it's already night i think so anyway a good day a good night uh, whatever and i thank you for being here i hope to see you next week again and then we continue bye